contributing citizens who have enhanced our identity and being as a province. It is not the individual achievements of Sidney Crosby that I would like to reflect upon, rather the character of exemplary citizenship that he typifies. Whether it is as a member of the National Hockey League team captain or Olympian, Mr. Crosby has always taken pride in his home country and province, especially his beloved Coal Harbor Dartmouth. No matter where he is playing or who he is playing for, his love of Nova Scotia and Canada is an example to all those who ventured away from our province to seek out opportunity in other places. He sets the example that one can remain connected and involved at home no matter where one's career takes them. I want to digress a bit and tell a story that was told to me about Sidney Crosby on the weekend. And there's a store in Dartmouth where Sidney Crosby shops often, a sporting goods store, Cleves. And the manager of that store um, happens to be married to my niece. And apparently, um, sometime last week, which I think it might have been Thursday, um, Sidney brought the cup to the employees of that store, the back door, um, so they can see the cup and have their pictures taken with Sidney. No fanfare, no media, just this young man wanting to share the cup with these employees. And then to ask them, is there anything you want me to sign? So I have to say, Mr. Crosby, um, my nephew was off the ground. He's still up. <laughs> he hasn't come down yet. So your personality brings much joy to people because you do it from your heart. While we rightly celebrate success and achievement today, we also reflect upon the positive influence an individual can have in being a role model. All Nova Scotians, but especially young people, need to see that a life full of personal accomplishment and success can also create a tremendous benefit for others. When I left Whitney Pier many years ago to work in the United States and Ontario, I often thought about my home and how I was raised. You see, it was there I learned many valuable lessons about life. My parents deserved much of the credit for who I have become. So I would be remiss if I did not mention your parents. It is obvious to everyone who has observed you that you were instilled with important values necessary to succeed in life. Compassion, selflessness, respect, kindness, humility, love, caring, and the value of service and giving back. Last year or a year ago, I saw you on a CBC interview. And there was one particular comment uh, that you made when you were asked a question about being the youngest team person to take over as captain, how you were going to convince some of the older players um, that you indeed um, are worthy of being a captain. And your response stayed with me, it resonated with me, and you said that I still have a lot to learn. And then you said that um, they have a lot to teach me and I will value what they have to say. And the next day, I took all of what you said because I was approaching, I was going to be speaking to some high school students. And, you know, when you, you're speaking to high school students, they wonder, well, what can she tell us? As soon as I said, I want to talk about Sidney Crosby, everybody sat up straight. <laughs> so I became a rock star with them because I knew about Sidney Crosby. But what I was sharing with them was the answer you gave to that question, which to me was um, a very powerful answer, which said a lot about your personality. So I used um, some other parts of, of the interview to share with the, with the young people so that they can see that young people 
can have strong value systems and still be away from home, be successful, but they have a strong foundation on which to fall back on. And I felt that it was important to share that with them and also to share it with the parents that were in the room as well. So your parents, as leaders, must have demonstrated these values in the home, whether it was through osmosis or family discussions. They gave you the foundation on which to help build your personality. From all accounts, you have taken those lessons along your life's journey. My sincere thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Crosby for the gift you have given to the world. Your sister, your grandparents, and extended family and friends are also to be thanked for the support and love they gave you. As the youngest member of the Order of Nova Scotia and indeed of any provincial order, I have no doubt that this is just one of many more achievements to come, both on and off the ice. So Mr. Crosby, your membership in the Order links you to other fellow citizens who have been recognized by the Crown, people who have contributed to medicine, science, philanthropy, human rights, public service, sport, industry, and heritage, all who have worked and continue to make contributions to the people of our province. One is hard pressed to think of a more noble or altruistic group of people. As Chancellor of the Order, I welcome you into our ranks. Please accept our congratulations from a grateful and proud province and wear your insignia with pride as we are very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I would now like to call upon the Honourable Daryl Dexter, Premier of Nova Scotia, for remarks. Thank you. Uh, Your Honour, uh, Sidney Crosby, a new Order of Nova Scotia recipient, Mr. and Mrs. Crosby, the Crosby family, Sister Moore, Mr. Younger, uh, Karen Casey, uh, Wayne Gadet, Mike Savage, uh, MP for Dartmouth, and friends. Uh, welcome. It is a pleasure to be here today and to celebrate with Sidney and his family as he receives the Order of Nova Scotia. As you all know, or may know, I was unable to attend the festivities on Friday, August 7th. And although I enjoyed my first meeting with the Premiers from across the country at the Council of Federation meeting, <laughs> there was no place on earth I would have rather been than at home in Cole Harbour with my friends and neighbours. Winning the Stanley Cup is a cause for celebration. Parades, parades and other festivities should take place when something big happens to one of our own. But on August 7th, more than 70,000 people took time out of their busy lives to celebrate with you. The reason why we honor you today is the same reason why 70,000 people honored you two weeks ago, and that is because you make us proud. You are one of the best hockey players in the world, but you have never forgotten your roots or, your, or the place where you grew up. I'm sure that you've heard this time and time again, that you're a role model to the youth around the world. But I have to say it again. You inspire youth and you are a role model. On behalf of Nova Scotians, I want to thank you for your commitment to your community, your sport, and the young boys and girls in this province that aspire to be like you. Congratulations, Sydney. All the best for a successful hockey season, and I look forward to celebrating the next Stanley Cup with you in Coal Harbor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of Her Honor, the Premier, Mr. Crosby, and Sister Dorothy Moore.